Today I'm here to talk to you guys about Super Audio CD. The story of SACD is one of missed opportunities, mistakes, buggy, confusing hardware and software, incompatible specifications, and just plain old defective products. And that's just my own experience. But the overall history of Super Audio CD is littered with many of those same problems. This was a format meant to succeed the original CD, with vastly better sound and a modern hi-fi take on multi-channel audio. For a bunch of reasons shared with other market disappointments like Betamax, CD video, and digital compact cassette, it just never caught on with the masses. I never bought into SACD during its heyday, but ever since doing my video on surround sound music, I've been a multi-channel convert. It just really can put you inside the music in a way that makes stereo seem old-fashioned and even quaint. SACD was the first modern digital music format to support 5.1 audio, and there are still quite a few releases only available in that format. Since I didn't have SACD for that surround sound music video, I also wondered how the SACD of Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon compared to the Blu-ray version of the same mix. Would I hear any difference? Anyway, old formats often end up cheap enough to just have a bit of fun with, and sometimes they do certain things better than the formats that supersede them. So I decided to get myself an SACD player, and I learned a hell of a lot from doing that. Buying into SACD in this day and age is a lot trickier than you might expect. But I'll get to all that in a moment. First let me give you a bit of background on SACD and why it's a format so prized by audiophiles. I'm going to try to keep the technical stuff as simple as possible, both for you and for me. By 1999, there were several movements converging together that were changing the face of recorded music. The first portable MP3 players were already on the market. DVD was in the process of taking over our living rooms and enticing many of us to upgrade our stereo systems to 5.1 digital surround sound. DVD audio threatened sales of CDs with its own take on multi-channel music. It would launch a bit later, but it was being developed at the same time as Super Audio CD. And CD piracy was beginning to become a real problem, at least as the industry saw it. The standard CD just was no longer cutting it in this new reality. So Sony and Philips, who created the original CD standard, created a new format that they hoped would sound vastly better than CD, would take advantage of the new 5.1 systems in people's homes, and would be all but impossible to copy. It would rely on existing disk storage technology created for DVD, but with a new audio format called DSD, or Direct Stream Digital. It's DSD that separates SACD from all of its competition. The digital audio on every other modern format we use is stored using a method called Pulse Code Modulation, or PCM. PCM stores music as a series of individual samples, and however many thousands of these samples are used per second is given as its sample rate. Your brain pieces these individual samples back together to make music in basically the same way it does for video that's made up of static frames. For CD, the sample rate is 44.1 kHz, or 44,100 samples per second. The amount of data that can be stored in each sample, or its resolution, is expressed in bits. A CD has 16-bit resolution. In PCM, higher numbers are theoretically better for both sampling rate and resolution. But DSD takes a totally different approach. It uses insanely high sampling rates at very low resolution. Think of it like a car with hardly any horsepower, but a ton of torque. The implementation of DSD on SACD uses a 2.8 MHz sampling rate. That's more than 60 times that of PCM on a standard CD, but at just one bit resolution. That means every sample can only increase or decrease in pitch and or amplitude by one step at a time. This is supposed to provide a more natural, more analog-like, smoother waveform, but it does so at the expense of noise due to tiny but continuous errors in the process. So the format generally has noise shaping built in, which may or may not color the sound. So the end result is, well, 
a lot of internet arguments about which approach is better. In fact, there was one major double-blind listening test done using industry professionals that pitted CD versus SACD, and the result was the same as picking names out of a hat. CDs just already sound about as good as humans can hear. Now, I don't really care whether SACD sounds better than CD, DVD audio, or anything else, to be honest. To me, any relatively modern, uncompressed, or losslessly compressed digital format is going to sound great. Most people, including myself, also just don't have speakers really capable of picking out the very minute and subtle details that might elevate something above the quality of a standard CD. For my setup, I'm using what amounts to a home theater in a box, an Infinity TSS-450 satellite system with a separate Yamaha subwoofer. I blew my Infinity subwoofer. <laughs> So, I can't really claim to be hearing audiophile quality anyway, and statistically speaking, that's probably true of most of you as well. But what I wanted was to check out some of the format's multi-channel releases. Multi-channel is an obvious difference between CD and SACD that you can hear on basically any setup with the right number of speakers. And I already know that it just sounds right in a way that stereo never really has. Multi-channel is to stereo what stereo was to mono. We may only have two ears, but we also have a brain in there that knows where sound is coming from. Now you can still buy a new SACD player, but remaining players are generally audiophile components and pretty unreasonably priced if you're planning to use one just to play a dead format. So I set out to buy something used. Used SACD or Universal players can be had for as little as $20 or $30. I had a few things I knew I wanted. First, I wanted something that looked like a real component and not like a little streaming box, because I just like big heavy equipment. Second, my current receiver has no multi-channel analog inputs, so I knew I needed a digital connection to get sound. And third, I didn't want to spend more than 100 bucks or so, including shipping. I wasn't sure whether this would be a permanent fixture in my setup, so I didn't want too much financial risk. All those things together narrowed my search down to mostly universal players made between, let's say, 2010 and 2014. These are players made to play either DVDs or Blu-ray discs, plus CDs and SACDs. I learned a few things while shopping around that an average person probably wouldn't realize. First, you cannot use an optical output to listen to SACDs. Your player needs to have HDMI because it needs an encrypted signal. But there's a catch, because not every player with HDMI will output SACDs over it. As I found out firsthand with the first player I got in what was the beginning of a string of really bad eBay luck. See, I ordered a Pioneer DV48AV, which I'd confirmed in its manual would do everything I wanted. I received instead a DV46AV, which is exactly the same player except that it will not output SACD over HDMI. So that player went back. Next I decided, what the hell, let's just get a Blu-ray player instead and a Pioneer Elite model, because I just like the idea of having one of their Elite components sitting in my entertainment center, and this way I could listen to all the different multi-channel formats I have on one device. So I ordered a BDP52FD. This player right here, which arrived in a box with no packing material whatsoever, and of course one of the clips holding the faceplate on had broken off and was rattling around inside. Luckily the player seemed to still work, and it gave me an excuse to open it up and get that clip out. And here you see why many players are so small these days. There's quite a bit of empty space in there without all that analog and conversion circuitry. Modern players just basically act as dumb digital transports, with your receiver or other audio device doing most of the decoding work. I hooked it up and ran smack into another big problem. No sound at all when connected to the rear HDMI inputs of my receiver unless my TV was physically disconnected. Didn't matter what kind of disc was in it, DVD, Blu-ray, SACD, whatever. To be clear, I'm talking about sound from my speakers, not through the TV. Still, the TV had to be disconnected, not just turned off. Strangely, it did work from the front input, so I knew the player itself was at least basically working. Although sometimes it'd work perfectly, and other times it would click on and off every 10 seconds or so. 
However, since I did at least sometimes get sound from the front input, I was able to test the sound quality and see what sort of formats my receiver could handle. Now, not many receivers anymore can do DSD decoding at all, but mine is advertised as being DSD capable. Unfortunately, I learned that while it can decode DSD signals, it can't do it over the HDMI inputs. <laughs> I hadn't bought my receiver for SACD playback, but I had hoped I might luck out. Now this isn't that big a deal because pretty much all SACD players can convert the signal to some sort of high resolution PCM. In the Pioneer's case, to 88 kilohertz 24 bit PCM. But it is still a conversion and the fewer of those the better. Ideally, the only conversion you really want is from digital to analog when your receiver sends music to your speakers. Now this also means that I still can't really judge SACD's native format and while I can pretty much guarantee that I wouldn't hear any difference, I'd love to have confirmation of that. Supposedly my receiver can decode DSD over a USB stick, but I tried that, couldn't get it to work. <laughs> anyway, with the sound not working at all with the TV connected, I thought, well, must just be some weird incompatibility between this specific mix of components. I'll just resell this player and try yet another one. I looked at this great list of SACD players and their various output formats on AVS forum and decided to try a Sony BDP-S790, which is cheap, pretty recent, can output the maximum 177 kHz for a DSD to PCM conversion, and which I thought had the best chance of playing nicely with my Sony TV. Unfortunately, when I received this one, it had been smashed in on one side. <laughs> I was really just about to give up at this point, but I thought, well, before sending it back, let me see if I can learn anything from it. So I hooked it up, and lo and behold, it did still work, though it acted exactly the same way as the Pioneer. That told me that there's nothing really wrong with the Pioneer, but since every other component I have works fine over HDMI, it also told me that there's nothing wrong with either my receiver or my TV. I checked around on some forums and found a few other people complaining about this same problem, so I think it's probably something to do with SACD's copy protection, which doesn't seem to play nicely with HDMI's audio return channel. This also gave me the chance to directly compare a 177 kHz conversion to 88 kHz, and of course I heard no difference whatsoever. If a group of industry professionals could not even tell a native SACD from a CD at 44 kilohertz, there is no way I'm going to be able to tell 88 kilohertz from 177. Though I suppose having that capability in your player is something you could brag about online or to your friends. So in the end, I think I'm going to keep the Pioneer for now because it's not smashed in, it probably acts like any other player would, and I really just don't feel like buying any more players. <laughs> But definitely remember all these issues if you're interested in SACD for yourself. Now, all that said, you're probably wondering what I think of SACD and its multi-channel sound. Well, as usual, I'm not going to be able to play you much of anything because of YouTube's copyright filters, and also you wouldn't hear what I'm hearing anyway. But being able to now directly compare Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon on both Blu-ray and SACD, to me, I can say they sound exactly the same. And that's more or less what I expected. I didn't buy this SACD because I thought it'd be better. I bought it as a reference so I'd know how good Blu-ray really was. And I can say unequivocally that both Blu-ray and DVD audio discs encoded with one of the modern multi-channel lossless formats sound just as good as SACD, at least on my setup. And vice versa, of course. Just to expand a little bit on sound quality, I mentioned and showed earlier that SACD has a bunch of noise in its upper frequencies. Luckily it's beyond our ability to hear, way up in the ultrasonic range. The range for human hearing is somewhere around 20 to 20,000 hertz, and SACD starts getting noisy up around 40,000 hertz. Most speakers can't even reproduce that, even if we could hear it. Now that 20 to 20,000 hertz range is not a hard and fast rule, but it's why CD originally was limited to that range. You can see that here in this recording of Pink Floyd's Eclipse, where the high frequencies are clearly being artificially limited. And that's true of every CD out there. Some people can hear frequencies higher than that though, and even if you can't, that doesn't mean you won't perceive them in some other way. 
Sound is just vibration, and there's lots of evidence for both ultrasonic and subsonic vibrations having various effects on the human body. High resolution formats like SACD, Blu-ray audio, and others have a much higher frequency response, and don't artificially limit the higher frequencies. Here's Eclipse again from both the SACD and the Blu-ray. You see that there's music all the way up to about 34,000 Hertz. Will you hear that? Eh, maybe, but probably not. But it's there. I'm convinced that a big reason why some people like these audiophile formats, though, is the loudness war that's taken over regular recorded music. I'll put a link to a video about that in the description. It's a little outside the scope of this video. But, for example, just look at the waveform from Scandal's new album, Honey. It's brick-walled to the point of rampant clipping, which just makes the whole album sound distorted and nasty. And it's a shame, because it's got some great music on it. Record labels do this because they assume people are listening in their cars or on little earbuds these days through devices with crappy little amps and digital-to-analog converters. But high-res formats are mostly immune to the loudness war, because it's assumed that people listening to these formats care about quality. So they're mastered differently for a different audience and a different listening situation. They have less compression, less, well, hopefully no clipping, and more dynamic range. It's not so much that the high-res formats sound subjectively better, it's actually the music that sounds better. This is the same reason I think a lot of people think vinyl sounds better too, because most vinyl was made back in the days when everything was mastered properly. New vinyl, though, is almost never mastered any differently than the same album is on MP3 or CD. The only other release I have to this point is Nine Inch Nails' The Downward Spiral, which is just amazing in 5.1 surround. To my knowledge, this is the only official Nine Inch Nails multi-channel album, and it's a shame that more people haven't heard it. Some bands and artists really just instinctively know how to use those extra channels. Pink Floyd and Nine Inch Nails really couldn't be much more different, but they are the same in that way. Honestly, it's been hard for me to find a lot of other releases I want and can actually afford. I was surprised to find that SACD has already become kind of a collector's format, with some releases going for $200 or even more. It's also pretty heavily weighted to certain genres, most of which are genres I'm not that interested in. There's a lot of classical and jazz, some classic rock, not much hard rock or metal, and not much electronic or alternative. What there is of those latter genres are often the most expensive releases, if you can even find them. So despite surround sound for movies going strong at the time, and some of the industry's heavyweights behind it, for me it's kind of mystery solved why SACD never caught on. I think some of the issues I've had are similar to ones early adopters would have had. There were just a lot of compatibility issues right from the start. Early SACDs just wouldn't play in standard CD players. You had to buy a new player, and in many cases a new receiver too. Back then, HDMI was not standard on a lot of receivers, so to take advantage of SACD's multi-channel output, you needed to use 5.1 analog inputs, which many receivers didn't have at all. If they did, they probably only had one set that may have been already in use by a DVD player. Hybrid discs appeared later that would at least play in standard CD players, albeit as standard CDs, with the thought being that people could build up a collection of SACDs that would eventually entice them to buy a player to unlock all the wondrous new sounds awaiting them on the SACD layer of their discs. But that just didn't really happen. It was also just an expensive format right from the get-go. Sony's SCD-1, the first SACD player, cost $5,000 at launch. And it took a while for things to really get much better. Sony did initially make the PlayStation 3 an SACD player, trying to take a backdoor into homes with the format the same way they did with the PS2 and DVD. I owned one of these early PS3s, and I never even knew it could play SACDs, which goes to show... something. <laughs> So, do I think you should buy into SACD in 2018? Well, unless there's a specific release you want, and this Nine Inch Nails disc is actually a pretty good argument for that, probably not. It's become mostly an audiophile and collector format, meaning prices are high and new releases in popular genres pretty much non-existent. 
It's not even all that much fun to mess around with because of all the compatibility and other issues. My experience has been more frustrating than anything. For most people, I'd really recommend just sticking with Blu-ray audio, which is still pretty niche, but is getting more new releases and the discs play in any regular Blu-ray player without weird copy protection issues. Ditto for DVD audio, which is pretty well supported on standard DVD players. By the way, after hours of fiddling over a period of weeks, I eventually figured out that I can get sound from my Pioneer player if my TV is connected to HDMI 4. This is a non-ARC, non-HDR input, so it's not an input I can leave connected all the time. It's annoying switching the cable around to listen to a disc, but it is a workaround I can live with for now. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this look at SACD and its many minor frustrations. I will see you next time. Bye bye. And this 9 inch nails CD is a pretty good argument for that. Ha <laughs> <laughs>